My name is uh, Yuri Rogachev. I'm a, a DHS2 implementer consultant at the UI, HISP UIO uh, based in Norway, uh, originally from Russia. I'm very happy to be here. And uh, I will uh, uh, share some insights and hopefully provide some back, some back baseline for discussion on the standard-based toolkits. The topic of today's discussion is to review how these standard-based toolkits can be used to support the implementations in such health uh, programs as HIV, TB, malaria, and others. I would like to, from the start, uh, reformulate that because it's not only that the standards uh, based toolkits can support the implementations, but the real implementations can support our work on toolkits and make it easier and more accessible uh, and more adaptable for you. So that's the main uh, idea of this. <clears throat> uh, what we'll look at today, we will try to define what are the DHS2 standards-based toolkits. I'll give you some examples. We'll talk about some implementation considerations, and then we'll end up with the discussions where people from HISPs uh, will be able to uh, maybe reflect on that. So let's start. <clears throat> it's not a mistake. I was considering, should I remove this or not? No, I won't. Uh, in every presentation that I've been talking about DHS2, somehow this way or another, the topic of Lego was mentioned either in the context of the whole DHS2 is a Lego, and then we provide the metadata packages or toolkits. This is the guidance, or maybe that is Lego plastic bags. What you can see here is where we don't want to go, the Lego disaster. And I think that's a part of our, what we are working on. <clears throat> so let me... Uh, give you my interpretation of the Lego metaphor here. So when I started as an uh, implementer uh, at the UIO, I thought, great, I have the Lego set for myself. I'll be the build a toolkit or a package on TB surveillance with the guidance from the WHO. And then sometime later, I saw that it was implemented in some countries. I said, what did you do with this? It's, it doesn't look like what we've done. And I said, well, we had to. I said, why? Well, there are many things. You, I guess you understand there's the legislation, there's different donors, uh, implementation considerations that make you change. There's sets of indicators and whatnot. And that's when I realized that I knew my job maybe on 5 10% of what I had to do. But that improved me, or helped me improve. Uh, and I think that, that that was my personal journey. And I think that we as a uh, implementation team working with the uh, different packages and toolkits, we are improving our strategies to make it easier for you. So let's define the implementation toolkit. <clears throat> it it's a Lego set consisting of guidance documents. So the design guides, uh, the guidance on how to use uh, those toolkits, the implementation suggestions, uh, and then also documents on Android optimization and so on. Then it gives you a demo instance, a database that you can use to uh, demonstrate a certain package to the donors, to the ministry, to the authorities. Uh, it has a metadata package. So we're talking about a JSON file with the configuration. Uh, and then it can have some integration tools and guidance on what to do with the package, training and capacity building materials, and sometimes custom apps. So all that uh, makes an implementation toolkit. And we have, together with our partners with WHO, with UNICEF, with, with, with other partners, and donors have been working on the implementation toolkits on HIV, malaria, 
tuberculosis uh, community um, <clears throat> uh, health information systems, vaccination, immunization, um, maternity and mother and child health, uh, COVID. Then we have the non-communicable diseases, uh, neglected tropical diseases, rehabilitation and, and other areas. And this is only the public health. Then there's also uh, the, the logistics and then there's also the education, agriculture, climate, and whatever. A more technical component of the uh, metadata toolkit is the package. So the file that you import into the DHS2 instance. <clears throat> um, th this is one of the main components, but not the main ones. With the minimal requirements from our team, we have agreed that the minimum we can provide or the minimum that the toolkit may contain is the guidance, documentations, and some sort of demo, right? Uh, a metadata package uh, is something that is already more uh, materialized. That's something that you will have to work with to adapt it. And so I'll, I'll uh, look into that and, and explain what that is. So a metadata package is a logical grouping of uh, metadata objects that can be exported and imported into DHS2 instances, and all of that is compiled into a JSON file. It contains a common metadata library, and that has been an achievement uh, that came several years back, making sure that the installation of the import of the uh, JSON files becomes easier and that you are reusing some metadata that is makes it possible for you to keep your instances more harmonized, that you don't have two attributes for sex or two attributes for date of birth and so on, but you keep it all uh, one. <clears throat> uh, a metadata package can have dashboards with dependencies or so indicators, legends, and the guidance, the instructions on how to map your existing metadata to that that we provide you with. It can, depending whether it's aggregate or tracker, uh, can have data sets with dependencies and it can have tracker one or several with dependencies included for you to, uh, to analyze and to work with. Uh, and on the screenshot here, you can see um, our new you know, downloads page that uh, you can access from dhs2.org uh, where our toolkits and packages are um, organized by health area and very soon we'll be adding educational domain there. <clears throat> so <clears throat> now let's look at the examples of these toolkits and I will start from something that is more overarching and quite new. Uh, and uh, we'll talk about the health facility profile. So a health facility profile is a toolkit that is meant to collect and analyze semi-permanent facility data in DHS2 for staffing, services, equipment, <clears throat> and infrastructure. So what kind of data does it have? It collects data about services provided, the basic staff numbers by cater, the bed availability, for example, equipment, uh, and infrastructure, availability of services, internet, computers, and, and so on and so forth. What's the source of the data? Where is it collected? It can be done through health facility assessments, health facility surveys, and facility self-reporting. Frequency can be done on six monthly basis, annually or ad hoc as needed. It's a tracker data model. So the data entry can happen at any time, not necessarily based on a period. Uh, for example, in the event of a health uh, emergency. And what's the purpose? It is to provide the policymakers and planners information on the availability and accessibility of 
various health care services. One of the reasons I took this as an example is also that this product is, it requires adaptation. Because you may be using DHS2 for certain areas, and therefore you might want to include only certain services or certain equipment and so on. So uh, you'll have to customize it, <clears throat> but the baseline, the skeleton is there, the dashboards are there, so it's the matter of uh, having implementers that are uh, that know what to do. And our role as the global team is to work with HISPs, if they are present in the region, to work together with them on, on, on adaptation of these uh, products and also uh, work directly with the countries in the regions where we don't have uh, HISP representations and not only support them in this one direction, but as I said at the beginning, get the feedback on what is needed from our side to make these toolkits and packages more adaptable. <clears throat> Again, the health facility profile, as you can see, all the data that is collected there on the availability of services, staff, uh, analysis of the preparedness of the services, the availability of key equipment, the infrastructure, all that can be analyzed separately, but it can also be used, uh, integrated into your HMIS system. I, when I looked at the uh, configuration of the standard uh, health facility profile, I saw various denominators for the basic HMIS uh, system that can be taken out of uh, a program like that. <clears throat> uh, and this product, it's relatively new. It's already, it's flexible and modular. So it's set up for local adaptation. Uh, and then provides the analytics tools. So point three and four and guidance to how to adapt uh, th this package, this toolkit to your local uh, demand. <clears throat> Another example, uh, tuberculosis. So what does the tuberculosis toolkit have? The one that we provide guidance for and, and materials. So we have full HMIS module with uh, WHO recommended indicators on case notification outcomes, drug resistant, TB HIV comorbidities, TB prevention and lab laboratory and house and contact tracing. In addition to that, we have facility reporting of essential TB stock items to complement to your logistics systems. We have a tracker for TB case surveillance and the linkage of case records with the lab results. We have a module on TB drug resistance survey, a program that has been taken apart many times by many countries. Uh, and even by me, even though I've I've been developing the the global module, uh, we've been working on and and in, in supporting the implementation of TB uh, drug resistance surveillance in in Central Asia, and we had to adopt it. Uh, we have a module on TB prevention, on the contact tracing, and yeah, the household contact tracing tracker, something that is. Uh, coming up now in the end of the year. Uh, TB is a large, very broad program, and it's very complex because an enrollment in a TB program can take up to two years. So, uh, but one of the reasons I'm bringing up the example of TB here is that it's, used in many countries and it's still a burden in, in many countries and there you it requires many types of uh, adaptations 
not only technical, but the package has to be translated, the materials have to be translated, the staff have to be trained. Uh, you have to, um, based on the current systems in place, you have to understand, is there need for data analytics or is it the standard analytics, or do you need to start with some custom reporting forms to first um, comply with the requirements from the government and so on and so forth. So it is very difficult to come up with a global package, but we are trying. And not only that, but we're constantly updating uh, the toolkits that we work on, either while well, because we find uh, more optimal ways to do that, or because some requirements change. In the example of TB, uh, the new guidelines are underway. And so we're working together with uh, the WHO currently on implementing those guidelines in the existing package so that you don't have to take it all apart or start from scratch. So that's, again, how, how, the, how this work is important and how important it is to take maybe a glance at the at the package before you design something new. Uh, and I will just uh, take you back to the beginning. You know, I was shocked at first when I saw uh, a, a real implementation in the country that looked completely different. And the same, I saw the, like the, 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 the people at, in WHO uh, headquarters that helped us design uh, those modules, they came back from country missions and said, well, but that's not the package we designed together. Why this effort? And it takes time to, to explain to, to the people, to the stakeholders about the complexity of that process. <clears throat> so HIV, another big topic, and also new guidelines that have been published this year, uh, including the new uh, DAC, so the Digital Accelerated uh, uh, that, and so what we have here is the HIV core HMIS module. So for the cascade analysis of newly diagnosed uh, uh, people with HIV, the RT retention, viral load of suppression, we have the prevention indicators and integration of the STI indicators. At the same time, we have the uh, stock items, so the stock management for uh, HIV. We have an HIV case surveillance module for longitudinal uh, data collection and person-centered monitoring. And the new module that will be released in December 2023, this is the module on HIV uh, prevention. And the way we are releasing modules now Sometimes we start with the uh, version 0 0.1 because we want uh, to start the process of implementation of filing prior to the publication. And so we, if we, together with our partners, identify pilot regions, pilot countries before, we are very happy when it happens so that they start. And so the HIV prevention work, uh, it has started in the PAHO region. And we have three uh, steps in publishing this model. So first it was the global, uh, the, the PAHO uh, version of the TB of the HIV prevention module. There was a subset of that package that was uh, developed for uh, one country in the region for Costa Rica. And then based on that and the experiences plus the new guidelines, the global HIV package will be available <clears throat> soon. And because we are learning and, and we are working on that process of making the, the, the steps easier, when the HIV prevention module was in the making, we have reviewed the HIV case surveillance to make sure that it complies uh, with the same kind of principles and becomes easy for countries to have kick off with the maybe pilot with testing and so on. Um, immunization, 
Here we have a variety of uh, components within the toolkit. We have the API program, so the expanded program on immunization. Uh, we have triangulation dashboards uh, where data comes from three, three packages. One is the EPI standard for HMIS, uh, the integrated disease surveillance uh, package, and the case-based tracker for vaccine preventable diseases. So it can be implemented as is, and you will have to search for the uh, for the data elements in your HMIS systems. Or it can be taken when you implement all three of these packages. We have the electronic immunization registry, so for uh, case-based data. Uh, we have templates for real-time monitoring of vaccination campaigns. You see it's not specified, is it COVID or is it something else? Because uh, we have seen that we could take the experience of the COVID vaccination campaigns that were held uh, during the pandemic and translate that to the future campaigns and make it easier and, and adaptable. Uh, again, the module on the EPI logistics and then <clears throat> adverse events following immunization and some apps developed for the, for the program that are also available uh, for you to to utilize. Malaria, <clears throat> the HMIS module on service delivery, um, data quality, facility reporting, with surveillance for elimination settings, with case notification, investigation and classifications, and then uh, a, an array of entomology and vector control modules available. There are other toolkits that I will not go into details. You can uh, visit our sites. You can also contact us at any time, contact me during this conference. I'll be very happy to show you some of this work to guide you to the demos. Uh, but the examples worth mentioning here is rehabilitation, a quite new module also for the, for the WHO. They have been developing the guidance for that and the indicators. So we have uh, a toolkit that contains 15 WHO indicators, six proposed data sets for data collection, and seven dashboards. <clears throat> and uh, what you see in the screenshot, I, I will share the presentation later. You can have a look at it. What's on the left, you can, you can see the three indicators from WHO. And in the right part, you see the DHS2 indicators that have been set up to report on those WHO indicators. <clears throat> so when we're making this module, we we had a clear understanding that the countries might take three or five indicators out of the 15 provided. So we had to make sure that the side that implements the package can actually take it apart and without really going through too many efforts. Uh, and now based on those indicators, we are working on the uh, rehabilitation tracker, <clears throat> adding additional uh, indicators to help the facility managers to plan uh, their work. Uh, a lot of work is being done on NTDs. So we have a burden data set and dashboards plus the possibility of integrating that with the uh, IDSR packages. We have uh, been working on simple NTD stocks, so ne neglected tropical diseases. Uh, and you see the uh, human resources part. And then if I go back a few slides, the health facility profile, this is where that data could already come from and be mapped. To. So sometimes it, it is very important for you and for us to look at the toolkits that we provide in an entity to see what could be combined one with the other. <clears throat> and the current work is being done on human rabies surveillance. And here uh, we are also dealing with, a, um, I don't know, unique or the, in that sense, uh, tracker that in one, on, on one hand, 
provides the uh, covers the indicators for surveillance, but on the other hand, may be served as a decision making tool in uh, the country where it's implemented, if adapted in a specific in in a certain way. And because we are working on the surveillance part, we provide guidelines of on how that can be done, because knowing from um, uh, from the countries and from the WHO, very often the cases of rabies, they're being treated or attended at the facilities where you don't have the specialists who know much about rabies. So they will have then uh, the, the decision-making or the suggestions coming from the, the program itself to help them guide them through the, the, the necessary steps. So that will also be available um, by the end of the year but we are starting together with the donors and the partners work with the pilot regions. And I think here in Asia specifically to identify who would like to try, start uh, and pilot it. So to the uh, summary, what are the DHS2 implementation toolkits that we have talked about? They aim to improve data quality, analysis, and use in national systems. They incorporate the collaboration process between UIO and WHO, UNICEF, and other organizations for the data analysis standards. They are modular and customizable, and they're becoming more modular and customizable as we work more together with you. They're available for many core health programs and they're designed in an integrated way. Uh, the localization and the adaptation of these toolkits needs to be based on country assessment, context and national priorities. That's your part. And they, of course, provide guidance and examples, but do not aim at replacing local design. So if I build that Lego car that I think is cool, doesn't necessarily mean that you find it cool. <laughs> uh, but you, you understand what I mean. I talk, we talked about it before. So uh, the considerations. Uh, it's not only about customizing the, the, the packages that we produce, but the adapting and the implementing of those packages means sometimes adding additional budget lines, right? So, so you need readiness assessments, you need uh, to customize the process itself, you need to plan the implementation and get the technical support, and you need to train uh, the, the teams. Also the end user training for the new modules, the dashboard or the data analysis trainings. Again, a lot of these materials are part of the toolkits, so you do not need to reinvent the, the wheel, but maybe localization translation is needed. <clears throat> uh, for new tracker implementations, this is a specific topic. We have a, a tracker budget guidance, so that needs to be addressed when considering the implementations. And then it's not a one-off implementation like it happens sometimes when you think okay I, I started and that's it no you need to uh some costs will be recurring because uh of the upgrades updates the ref training training refreshments uh, and so on and of course the upgrades to the systems and uh review of the data and metadata quality is very useful and is needs to be considered so I think I have, do we have time? And I think we're uh, not too late for discussion. So I would like to um, hear from the, maybe starting from the HISPs about their feedback on the process of how these standard uh, toolkits help them to uh, implement in the countries and open it for the broader discussion and questions. So thank you. Yes, please. I heard one recent 
So the objective of the toolkit, and I think that's one of the main ones from our side, is to improve data quality and provide the team uh, or the, the implementing party with tools for analysis and the use of the data. Uh, and even in this aspect, not all the implementations are mature enough for this. I can give you examples where uh, people want, uh, let's say, statistic data only because th that's required by the by the government, and they don't have the capacity to look into analytics tools. But still, adopt adapting part of the toolkit will help them to replace the burden of uh, you know uh, manual aggregation, and then. It, in a stepwise approach, address the data use uh, questions and so on. So that's uh, number one. And number two, uh, the toolkit is a collection of resources, basically. It has the design guidance on the, on the, on the packages. It has the overview of different components that you can implement within one health area. So let's say uh, data quality dashboards, trackers, uh, aggregate packages, uh, and uh, it contains different resources, whether you want to start by reporting aggregated data or whether you have uh, enough capacity to start with the individual case-based data in DHS2. So that makes it a toolkit. So the, the uh, collection of resources that are available for you at any time to study, to present uh, to the ministry, and to consider uh, using. That means data set and different yes so so let's say you start with a simple data set with aggregated data where Periodically, the data will be collected. How it's aggregated, whether the people doing it on paper or in registers, that's one question. You have that. The second step, maybe, is to build some visualizations or uh, adapt the visualizations that are coming with the toolkit to analyze the data. So the dashboards, based on the data you've entered. Then the step after that would be to plug in a tracker where the individual based data will be automatically aggregated and filling up those uh, aggregate data sets that you implemented in step one and therefore making the data granularity even more uh, clear. And uh, there can be several, you know, steps uh, in between, but that, that's kind of what oh, I hope I've managed to answer your, your question. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. Would you like to yeah. come here? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if that microphone works, but you can. But actually, uh, Adnan, sorry, uh, I had remembered we are recording this session and the microphone is sitting in the computer. So, uh, 
Well, I, I am. I mean, uh, I guess we are the only HIF apart from Indonesia uh, who uh, have been using uh, Tracker uh, over here. Uh, and Mina is also there, but I don't know if you've used any uh, packages. Uh, but uh, while Yuri was talking, I just kind of recalled uh, uh, when we met for the first time, he was there online and he was presenting this uh, TB and HIV tracker. And at that time, I mean, we had this Gates Foundation project coming in to digitize uh, case-based uh, TB tracker. So when I saw the tracker, I was very happy. And I said that uh, my all of work is done because I got all the configurations. I got all the uh, dashboards. I've got everything. So I guess it's like this. So we got the early release and we just installed it onto a dummy server. We started working and then we changed that tracker a lot to an extent that I and Ula were, Ula were working in the office and uh, we practically broke it. And then we had to contact Yuri again. <laughs> uh, Yuri, I mean, we broke the tracker, there's something issue. So no matter how close uh, your configurations or your data flows are, uh, these trackers, uh, these packages are very good and can be used as a reference material because they did make they do make your life easy. You'll get all the whole of the data flow by just clicking a few buttons and the tracker is installed, the package is installed, and you can simply um, show the government that this is the data flow that you're following. And the data flow usually is the same. The reason is because uh, UIO is a WHO collaborating organization. So uh, Yuri, and there's Austin, uh, Breno, all of them sit with WHO very closely, work with them and make those uh, workflows work for you. So um, Yuri also presented about this um, uh, health facility profile. So uh, I guess we were the first country to use uh, uh, TB tracker, WHO TB tracker package. We were the first country to use uh, nutrition aggregate module package and i guess we will be the first country to use the health facility profile package as well but uh, this time I'm, I'm not keeping my hope size so we'll be doing a lot of configuration um, according to to set the tracker according to the country context so so you get um, a card uh, but you need to put in the fuel and necessary parts just to make it run so I guess uh, uh, that's what I wanted to say, but because I mean, these packages are really good when we talk about the baseline configurations and you'll, you'll get all of these uh, really good data flows flowing in. Uh, and we also learned a lot uh, while implementing this tracker that how um, these uh, program indicators are working. Uh, we had to change some according to the country context, but uh, this, helped us a lot. And secondly, the good thing about these packages is that, that uh, they follow our standard. So like we have this WHO uh, aggregate TV package, uh, which only collects aggregate data. And then we have this WHO tracker TV package, which is a more kind of a case-based system. But if you want to do um, case-based to aggregate, because you do need uh, aggregate reporting at your end, and that can be easily done because uh, the standard they are following is the same. So this is also something that helps you a lot while you're implementing. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. I'll, I'll just uh, add a comment to what you said. And <clears throat> yes, uh, these toolkits, these packages, they follow standards. Th this does not stop uh, the, you know, countries or individual uh, organizations to develop their own trackers. But I think knowing the steps that we have taken and learning from our experience will also help you to develop your own material in a way that you will not uh, be re regret regretting it in the future when you have to change, add, or remove our things. So uh, the standards we include in our toolkits are also helpful for any 
in individual uh, development. So, thank you. so for, for the global portfolio, we have we have our donors, we have the organizations that work we we work with, and so together with them we have the the calendar of releases we plan ahead in for the next year what are we going to work with uh them so that that uh that, that is being discussed on the, on the global level of the you know global fund gava cdc the, the the who and and us but then you have exactly like you're saying if you have a local uh requirement uh and i have just had the conversation with a WHO country office at some point. And they said, well, what do you have on your agenda for the upcoming releases? Because we would like to work on that. I said, well, but why does it stop you? Why why, why do you need to be, uh, you know, chained to all the global work? You can also try to define your local demands. Oh, the, the donors, they react better if we, if they see some global component in that. Surely, but uh, if you have... Uh, Hispan place, or if you have the you know the local implementers that can work on the requirements that you have and build uh, those trackers, uh, we can support you through that. So you can first of all contact us, and if we might help you identify uh, countries or maybe players that have already gone that through that path and find some resources that you can use to get you started. We have a community uh, of users where you can also try to give it a, a start. And that's how things, uh, you know, get started. And and maybe from that, we can also think of something uh, more more global. So, and sorry, and, and you, where, where are you from? UK, well, you know, can some people think we are doing that? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and then we have to say that we can, but should we? <laughs> uh, you can cross question. Can you develop well, VHS report? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And, yes, and, and there's also another component. I think you should also uh all with I would always recommend a stepwise approach. To that okay so the first may be that just you know studying the demo and the guidance the second would be to demo it to the uh to the country to the implementation uh, partners and then consider where to begin uh because sometimes you can just throw the resources and say oh let's translate everything first and then you realize half through the way, no, no, those dashboards are not needed for us. And then you've spent the resources on that already. And translation is maybe not the major part of that, but still uh, that helps. So you maybe say, okay, let's, let, let's, when it comes to tracker, let's look at the data entry. How can it, how can it be worked? And then if it works with a standard configuration, you can, you can try to, pilot it in the standard configuration and see what data you still need, what's, what is not needed. Because even with the, uh, with the country needs, you might at a certain point identify that you're building such a complex thing that you might not really need. And then you can say, okay, let's park that 
for the phase two, for the phase three, and start with the basics. Uh, because it's much easier to extend than, you know, to have the whole uh, giant, uh, you know, monster that you will not be able to take apart afterwards. Yeah, so I guess uh, if there are no more questions, we can uh, close the session and thank you very much for uh, listening and taking part in that. And, uh,